Hey guys, John Luxley here, back with our walkthrough of Subnautica. I was just sitting here looking at the water for a minute, and I wondered, this ocean looks really good. You think they used it in, uh... Well, I mean, probably not the same team used it in, uh, like, Sea of Thieves or, um... Or any of those, but... Just got me thinking, like, what other games with, with great water effects are there? Uh, for example, I know the, um... I believe it was the whole Pirates of the Caribbean series started because they designed the water first. And they're like, oh, hey, we have, we have great water. What can we do with it? I know, let's put a boat on it. So, kind of interesting. I wonder if some of the same team members have gone to, to different projects. All right, so last time we explored a little bit of the sparse reef. Sparse reef. We found uh, we found another time capsule, our second, which is amazing. And uh, right, we have a radio message. Um, so I believe. Oh, and you can see the the headlights from the sea moth. Now I would wager that this is probably from the sunbeam. So let's find out. No. Signal location uploaded to PDA. Okay, this is odd. Um I Yeah, usually you don't get that. <clears throat> Um, I mean, maybe it's maybe it's changed in the last update, but usually you don't get this one until after you go to the mountain island. Holy crap! Even that thing got some air. Look at that. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering, those little those little light flecks that you see in the distance on the surface, those are actually uh, brain coral. They're the bubbles going to the surface and then popping. Not that that really helps you in any way. I mean, because you're on the surface already. But, uh... Right, so... Our, uh, our sea moth can go down to... And look, the sun's coming up. In the northeast, where it typically does rise. Well, on Earth. Who knows about the... You know, alien worlds. Um, yeah, so our sea moth can go to about 200. And then we can just dive the rest of the way. If needed. So, first things first... Yeah, I guess the question is, should I start building a base just yet? Um, uh, maybe. Maybe. Okay, so we're going to need some water. I still have some bleach, so let's use that and... Right, we'll go find some fish. So here soon we're gonna want to go to the Aurora, but yeah, see, we're not doing this stuff in order, which is kind of, you know, what I did want is to do it kind of in the way that typically people, come on Gary, uh, in the way that people, people typically do it. Oh, I got the peeper also, nice. Well, we can only do what we can do. Drink that. Gary fish. Cooked peeper. Okay, so we're we're basically good on, on food and water at the moment. What was this? Oh yeah, enameled glass. So if you get a stalker tooth and a gla and a piece of glass, you can make enameled glass, which you need for 
well, not the purple tablet, but you'll need it for other things like your uh, your observatory, and eventually when you get a bigger submarine, that's what that'll do. So what we can do. So I'd actually like to start... You know what, I'll, I'll show you the normal base area. We'll turn off the lights because it makes it a little bit difficult. Um, so first off, actually let's, let's head kind of south. Um, there's a couple of good starting areas for a base that you want. You want something that's got a little bit of depth like this area, but this area would not be good because it's kind of enclosed. You know, you want a little bit of room to spread out in. So ironically, the safe shallows is not the best spot for a base, or at least not the center where it's shallow. Oh, and those guys are fighting. It's kind of awesome. Uh, so typically you'd want something either around here. Oh, whoa. oh yeah, I guess we hit the surface there. Around here somewhere there is a thermal vent. So I, I suggest kind of near a thermal vent because it generates a lot of good power. Oh, and there's another, um, I guess, rock that didn't come in. And you got a roof back right there if you want some some nice, uh, you know, something to view. Right. So we're just kind of. Not necessarily wandering around. Okay, we're probably too far east, um, but it's not that important. If you if you're wandering around in the south, oh, hang on, it is near here. You can hear it there. Is that it? Okay, cool. So this is a thermal vent. As you can see, it's it's pretty hot. If you look at the temperature gauge on my uh, near my, you know, health and power. It's 41 degrees Celsius, which is pretty warm. Um, and that's actually pretty good for you know building a thermal plant right next to. You. Now you will take damage if you get too close, like that. Although with that reinforced dive suit that we've scanned. Uh, you'll be able to go a little bit closer. Now, the issue is it doesn't actually go anywhere. Um, so you can basically build your uh, your thermal power generator kind of down in there, and then you'll be good. But. And actually, there's a. If you look, there's a wreck right here also. Let's just take a quick peek. Oh, and, and uh, before I forget, let's show you guys this. There's kind of a Stonehenge in the game. Right? I mean, it's not perfect Stonehenge, but it's reasonable. It's kind of neat. It's just like... You know, so one of the starting locations is, or, well, one of the good starter locations for a base is right near Alien Stonehenge. I think that's pretty neat. And then, of course, you got some limestone, you got some scrap metal around. Um, I don't actually, I don't think I've been here this time around, so we'll just take a quick peek. And see, don't forget to check inside of those, like there was a sea glide piece earlier. Okay, and this one actually has a handle, which means you can actually open it. There you go. So I haven't been here because there's a PDA right in there. And one of the few times 
You know what, let's, let's grab the sea moth and park it right out here. Um, that little broken control panel is one of the few times you'll actually use the repair tool inside a wreck. Which is, it's nice that there's a bunch of variety. You know, so you have, you have doors that you can open, you have doors that you cut through, and then you have doors uh, that you need to fix. So the grav trap, which I believe we already have the full blueprint for, it'll check real fast. Uh, yep, we do. Okay, so we won't scan that. I mean, there's no real need at the moment. Um, and remember, if you do have the propulsion cannon, you can move some of these boxes around. For now, we'll grab this. Right, so it's another... Another, um... Of the people that we're trying to fix. And now it's green, and then you just click and open it. And that'll give us another beacon fragment. And that's... About it, at first glance, this vent doesn't actually go anywhere. And just just more beacons. So it's like, hey, if you have the repair tool and you haven't found a beacon from all the ones outside, then you can grab one in here. And we have another radio message. Hopefully this will give us the, uh, the sunbeam. My, I'm, I am a little bit worried that the, the story mode's got, gotten a little bit off track because of that, picking up the blue tablet, but I think we're fine because it didn't, um, like the sunbeam is kind of the big, the big thing. I've also put a video up of what happens if you just ignore the radio, um, because, well, you know, the sunbeam, they're here to rescue you, but... You know, it would be kind of anticlimactic if that was the end of the game and you just escape. Plus, we have some sort of mysterious alien infection and that hasn't gotten fixed. So, for now, we'll see what happens. So that's one of the recommended starting locations right near Stonehenge. We'll check the other one out here in a second. Aurora, we're approaching the planet now. There we go. We have a landing site for you that's... Well, it's better than the alternatives. We've sent you the coordinates. It'll take us a couple of days to align our orbit. We should be able to establish direct contact with you during that time. Then we're coming in to get you. Cross your fingers, the weather holds. And don't leave us waiting. Sunbeam out. So you can see now we have a little countdown. Um, if you don't make it, well, the event pretty much plays out the same way, but you don't get to see it happen. But, how much space do we have? Let's drop off everything that we don't need at the moment, and that's full, so that's fine. Okay, hang on, what are we, what are we doing as far as... Scanner, repair tool. I'll uh, take the scanner. Flashlight. Don't need the repair tool. Not really. And we'll take the light stick. Why not? And then that's basically it for the time being. Now, why am I... Uh, Doing this? Well, this is why. Um, you know what? Let's also take the battery out of this thing. Thermoblade. Yeah, that's fine. We'll take the batteries out of all our things as well. Primarily because the um, the flashlight and the scanner 
you know, I don't want to run out of them while on the island. Okay, so scanner, blah, 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 repair tool, sea glide. Okay, we have a bunch of partially filled batteries. And it's counting down just all the time. No battery, no battery. Yeah, laser cutter, we're kind of running low on that. And uh, habitat builder, we'll, eh, you know, we'll hold on to. At least for now, we'll put the silver ore in there. We also have the purple tablet we got from the, and we don't need a live peeper. We'll hold on to the water nutrient blocks we don't need at the moment. Beacon, flashlight, habitat builder, scanner, laser cutter, repair tool. This is fine. We have enough, we have enough inventory space. So let's start heading that way. Welcome aboard, Captain. So that is the only beacon that's going to permanently disappear. So normally, you have your beacon manager, you have all of these. And you can, those fade, but they stay. This one's not even in your beacon manager. It's just gone when it, when you go there. So let's start, start going that way. Now they mentioned dry land, so it's going to be a lot like the floating island that we saw earlier, where uh, there's plants and stuff on it that you can consume for food. So if you're worried about running out of food, food, don't worry a whole lot. Um, and I'm just kind of keeping an eye out for... Well, there's another wreck, and... Yeah, we'll just... Yeah, yeah. Just kind of pause. Uh, wait. It's just wreckage. But there's a trash can right here. I don't think I... Oh, I have scanned that already. Alright. You'll notice there's a decent sized chunk of the Aurora right there. There probably is stuff in it. And so we'll just check real fast. Okay. First thing you want to do is just kind of sweep. Sweep the outside looking for entrances. Watch out for the stalkers that you hear swimming around. And there's a door for laser cutter. Now our laser cutter is a little bit low at the moment, so usually, in, and that guy's kind of stuck. Um, in this case, I don't think we're gonna find a second entrance, but usually you can find a second one. So we'll, uh, well, I hope I have enough. If not, I do have those extra batteries so I can always swap out And it is, it is important to remember that the countdown is just, it's going. It still is going, so you want to give yourself enough time to get there. Because that countdown will just keep going and it goes faster than you'd think. Mobile vehicle bay fragment, okay. We'll take this. And that's the third crew member. It's kind of interesting that we're finding all of them. Okay, if this goes outside, I'm going to be a little annoyed. It probably does. Yep, okay, see? That's what I meant about paying attention, because I wasn't really looking. And I even remembered that there was one. Oh, there it is, okay. Yeah, when you get super close to your vehicles, their, uh, their thing, their little icons disappear. Which is important to remember, especially because creatures will still attack them. Creatures don't particularly like, um, not enemy vehicles, but just, uh, you know, they're, they're a little bit more territorial. And I'm just going to look around a little bit here, because I remember... I don't remember precisely where it is, but along this area is uh, actually the center of the map. And kind of close, 
kind of close to the... Oh, is that a... Nope. Well, I guess you don't have to worry about mesmers when you're in a vehicle. Um, but somewhere along this area, there is a... Whoa there. Whoa there. Calm down. And it should be in this area. There's going to be another thermal vent. That's not it. This... Hmm. Okay, so this is actually, this place right here is basically your your exact center of the map. Um, oh, sorry, fish. Is it toast or is it still alive? Yeah, okay, well, don't worry. I won't let your death be in vain. We'll eat your, your rotted body later. Um, but it's like this little outcropping is essentially the center of the map. And so what happens typically is that you will you'll build your starting base somewhere and then uh, you build the scanner room and the stalkers will since they like metal they'll grab your little camera drones and typically they take it right over here to the base to the essentially the the zero point on the map and I don't know if it's a glitch or, or what the deal is but the fact they spend so much time here means or at least on my plays th playthroughs, there's always a giant swarm of stalkers. And they just become a huge pain in the ass. But if you kind of head north, northwest, from that location, eventually you'll find a... a little ridge like this one. And here's your second thermal vent. Although this one's a lot deeper than the first. Than the first one that I showed you. So this is another good spot for a base. Except for the fact that those stalkers, you know, multiply like crazy. Um, and there's actually been a few times where I've had to take a, a stasis rifle and a thermo blade and just, just kill them all just because of how many there are. Like it's... It, it becomes ridiculous at times, and they'll if you get near them, they'll just all bite you at once, and you'll die. Or at least, that's been my experience. So, you know, just be a little careful. And we get another radio signal, which is like... Yeah, you wanna... You wanna go back and get the message, but... It's not the sunbeam again, it's just another landing spot or uh, another uh, another life pod and it's it's honestly it's not a problem at this point we have about 30 minutes so it's not not a huge deal to go back are we at the okay so we're at the we're already at the mountain and there's a funny looking alien structure over that way. Now, one thing you will notice is, you know, it's it's been changed a little bit. As you used to come this way, the, the thing that really freaked me out about the game was I would swim and I'd swim and you'd see the ground disappear under you because it's so deep. Um, and that's not, well, I guess it depends on your starting location, whether you're crossing, you know, different areas or not, but Eventually you'll come here and the ground will come back and you'll realize it's land. Now, listen, listen carefully. We can't hear it just yet, but on the eastern side of the island, there's gonna be a Reaper Leviathan pr patrolling around and you'll hear its, its roars as we get closer. And there's a bone shark. Uh, so this is, yeah, and see, you get, I don't think, I don't think that's two. I just think it's reminding you that there is one. Um, oh, and there's a warper. Okay. So this mountain biome actually borders what they call the floating islands. Um, and the floating islands are home to those bone sharks, which are highly aggressive. Detecting massive energy signature in the region. Cannot identify. Right. Well, that would be 
that alien structure that we're going to go look at here in a second. Um, but in the meantime, you can just kind of, you know, follow this and just, you can, you can kind of hear it very faintly, the roar of the Leviathan. Although that is actually the bone sharks. You also notice the music has changed. One thing I do recommend as you kind of putt around here is first off, watch out for the warpers. Not only watch out for them, but keep an eye out for them because this, there it is. Now you can hear it. You'll hear it again in a second. And you might be able to see it as we get a little bit closer. There's, you know, with, if you're within 300 meters of a Reaper Leviathan, you'll hear its roar. That's something you want to be aware of because they are probably the most aggressive um, just predators in this whole ocean. Let me check out this box since we're right here. I mean, the stalkers and all them... That's a mobile vehicle bay fragment. And see some more salvage down there. We're gonna go check that out real fast. Um, but like I said, be aware, because this is the area straight ahead of us is where that Reaper Leviathan likes to be. Okay, and that's more of the uh, mobile vehicle break, mobile vehicle base segment. So if you haven't gotten one yet, that's your opportunity. Something else to check out while you're in this the mountain area is it's great for not only salvage. Oh wait, yep, kind of need the sea moth. It's great for um, parts. Aboard, Captain parts of the Cyclops. Additionally, I mean, let's be honest, the mountain range is probably one of the bigger, like, most dangerous areas. We will... See, I don't know why I can hear it closer on this side. Okay, there's the Warper. We'll go check that out real fast. Um... Or not, because it teleported away. So yeah, warpers teleport. Okay, next time we see one, we'll get one. Uh, this is probably the best time to do it, that or the end of the game, if you're gonna, if you're trying to go for, you know, scanning everything and full completion. Oh, and there's a Cyclops engine part. Oh, there's the warper. We'll check this out first. Boom. Yep, I don't much care for the Reapers. Oh, there we go. Now they, yep, they'll attack you. They will hurt you. So, you know, just kind of circle strafe around them, keep scanning, keep scanning. They're, generally speaking, they'll leave you alone at this point. Yeah, and they definitely sound very, like they're, they're just not happy, just in general. They're kind of... This one seems a bit more aggressive, though, than normal. So what they'll do is they'll either attack you if you're in a vehicle, they will they can teleport you out of it. They can attack you themselves directly with their, like, mantis claw-looking things. Um, but they can also teleport in different 
creatures, usually the aggressive ones. So they'll teleport those in, and uh, those creatures will attack you instead. So, Sunbeam landing site, pretty close. Pretty close here. Just kind of looking around. Uh, those are actual rocks, not anything we can break, I don't think. I don't know if you saw the little guy jumping around right there. So we'll just park the vehicle kind of right here. It's... Hey, guy. And uh, we'll do some crab battling. Because you're going to be chilling here on the beach for about 20 minutes. Kind of. Next to the bulbo tree. Come here, you stupid thing. Usually they're super aggressive, so... Bear. Okay. Little things like that. Actually, I'm pretty sure just about everything in the game can be killed. Although, you have to knife it. You have to shank it. So... Just FYI. Alright, we'll, uh... Eat some bulbo tree, and we'll get another couple from over here. That'll do for now. So we're just going to kind of wander around for a bit. Uh, there is a cave system here on the island. And that actually has some pretty good minerals and stuff in it, so if we just look... Of course, there's more of these dick bags. I'm gonna try not to swear very much, but uh, you know. Oh, hang on. Oh, guess this. Whoa, whoa. Chill out. Right, and this is a great place for lithium. Lithium here just kind of grows on the walls. That and you'll find diamond and shale and stuff. Right, like a couple pieces of shale right here. It amuses me and angers me at the same time that Altera is so uh, stingy. Like the whole thing, they pick up you pick up a diamond for the first time, and they're like, "Hey, don't forget, since you're you're basically on the job, everything you pick up belongs to Altera. So right now you owe us three million credits." It's like, screw you guys, I'm trying to survive here. And so there is, um, yeah, you can hear the Leviathan, like, outside, in the air, you can't see it, because obviously you can't hear the roar. But on the inside, and there's, you know, more of those guys walking around underneath. Okay, we'll go ahead and scan the cave bush. And in here, actually, there's another purple tablet. Can we scan this? We can scan some of the stuff on the walls, like I think these. Tree leech. Uh, although, there's, they're not on the trees right here, they're on the rocks. It still, still counts, I guess. And blue palm. There's more stuff to scan, but... You don't typically want to get lost. This There's actually a lot of caves down here. And uh, actually, here, let me... Right? So look at that. You can kind of see, like, all the... All the caves. Which is neat. But it only is useful in water. You can't actually do it... On land, for whatever reason. But you saw those caves above land, too. So we'll check those out. Uh, the caves above the land. We have about 18 minutes. So in the meantime, well, there's a couple things we can do. First thing that I want to do is kind of go through some of the, the scans and other stuff that we've been picking up so far. I, I didn't really want to at the moment, or I mean not at the moment, previously, because uh, there, there was just too many of them. There's so many of them. So here it's like, 
Yeah, look at this. Look at this peaceful area, right? So you got the alien facility. You have like a little force field over there. You have a path that goes up over there, which, to be honest, the first time I never noticed. You have an enemy crab, which we're gonna... Which we will fight to the death. Um, a fun glitch, if you want, is to actually jump on top of it while it's running around, and it'll just... It'll go wherever. They're pretty fast, even underwater, and they only hurt you when you attack them, or when they attack you, not uh, not when they're being stood on by you. So we can go up here, there's a little, you know, the little alien lights. And we find another purple tablet, which is handy. You can hear the hum of the alien technology, and like some weird, weird cables. And then the actual building itself. Now if you keep going, there's another little path, another little beach. And oh, okay, we gotta, let's go scan that down there. I didn't expect to see one of those. Uh, it's another piece of the Cyclops. So you may have noticed when we scanned the first time, uh, it's basically like one of three. So generally the Cyclops engine fragments are probably the harder harder things to find. Yeah, and you can hear it. I don't know where it is. It... Oh, there it is. Look at that giant thing. Yep. So just be careful. Um, you know, if you hear those. Oh, and there's another piece. Okay, let's... We'll go for that because... Finding the engine is kind of difficult at times. Alright, so we have the engine blueprint. You actually need... Yeah, look at that thing. And the warpers do become more aggressive over time. Um, basically in line with the story, because your infection starts, starts to progress. And so it's basically like, hey... Well, you know, the reason why is, is story-based, but we'll get into that a little bit later. So for right now, we'll uh, we'll head back to the landing site. Actually, let's go down here. Oh, ah, that hurt a little bit, but that's, you know, nothing we can't handle. So you walk over here, because typically you're drawn to this, to what looks like a giant doorway, right? Not to the path. And you get here and you're like, what is this thing? Scan it. And that's what actually gives you the blueprint, typically. And then you get here and you're like, oh, force field control, okay. And it's purple thing, just like the tablet we picked up. And this doesn't actually hurt you, it just blo it's like a wall, essentially. And it's getting dark. Well, they did say two days. So we'll go ahead and insert the tablet. Okay, so the force field control is down. Okay, so we're doing all right so far. I'll just sit here and watch some of the... I guess we'll stand over here for now. So let's, in the meantime, you can see all the stuff we've picked up, and uh, let's kind of go through, not the, not the voice log necessarily, but, you know, what we do want to do, is that uh, not fading? Where's the one? Oh, there we go. Right. Um, so what we do want to do in the meantime is, is go through some of these 70 things, right? So, data downloads first. Degasi Survivors 9. We picked up a few of those. Alien scan data. So, if you're wondering what those alien vents were, these vents connect to an ancient piping network that extends beyond maximum scannable depth. The pumping system is still functional. The inflow, vent, inflow vent is drawing water from the surrounding area and pumping it to an unknown location below the surface. Warm, deoxygenated water is being expelled into the atmosphere. Um, I mean, it's not into the atmosphere, it's into the 
so the outflow is warm, deoxygenated water. Most creatures are avoiding the vents. Peepers can be observed entering and exiting the pipe network without signs of distress. Assessment, further research required. Now these, these alien vents, there's only like six of them in the whole map. So some people go through without ever finding these. Force field control terminal. This device matches no known technologies and is likely alien in nature. Power is being routed via the terminal to the nearby force field. Technology is far below, beyond anything encountered before by the Federation. Uh, Federation, I assume, is all of humanity, not just Altera or the uh, Mongolian states. Uh, so none, nonetheless, there's a good chance it functions like a regular lock, only requires the correct kind of key. And, I mean, obviously you could you can make the case that the aliens or the precursors set it up so that any idiot could figure it out. You know, it's like, it's got a big glowing symbol on it that matches a big glowing symbol. And it appears to be uh, like almost magnetic. When you hold the tablet near it, it just like sucks it in. Purple tablet. This carbon-based device is lighter than it looks. It features a symbol which resembles a U, which resembles a U lit up in purple. Despite the onboard power still functioning, algae growth on the exterior indicates it was abandoned hundreds, perhaps thousands of years ago. While that technology is far beyond Federation levels, and there is no obvious way to interface with it, it should nonetheless be possible to fabricate a precise physical copy of the device if necessary. Okay, so let's check the Altera search and rescue missions first. Degasi crew manifest Bart Torgal. Auxiliary search and rescue mission, Bart. Position Vice President of Torgal Corp. Lost in space near planet 4546 Bravo. Age of time of disappearance, 19. So this is the Torgal's son. The only legitimate child, oh, that's funny, legitimate child of Paul Torgal. Beneficiary of enhanced learning techniques and cerebral implant, implants. Digi trained in advanced biochemistry and stellar economics. Emissary Kassar reports Bart was accompanying his father to a newly constructed deep space station where he was to serve a five-year term as chief operating officer. So let's look at Paul. Chief of Torgal Corp, captain of the Degasi. Right, so he was one of the corporations that falls under the Mongolian states. Age at the time of disappearance, 79. Paul and his crew fell out of contact with Mongolian authorities close to a decade ago. Torgals were a resourceful and powerful clan, and the ship was well equipped, so their survival is considered likely. However, hmm, excuse me, I need more coffee. However, multiple vessels passing through the system have since attempted to trace the ship to no effect. It is hoped the Aurora's superior scanning suite can do better. Made majority shareholder in Torgal Corp by his mother upon her retirement, so it's a like a family thing. We got nine minutes left, and the sun's coming up. Beneficiary of like. Extension Technologies, accompanied by his only child, Bart, heir to the Torgal Corporation. Emissary Kassar reports Torgal often traveled with a skeleton crew and was known for making rash but profitable decisions. Inadequate systems maintenance or straying from its planned route may account for the ship's disappearance. Uh, it's actually the second of the two because of making rash but profitable decisions, which we'll find out. Marguerite made a Position, freelance security personnel, age of time of disappearance, 42. But age doesn't matter so much because of, you know, the advanced technologies. She's a mercenary, born in the Mongolian states. Experienced in ship-to-ship -ship and close-quarters combat techniques. Tours of duty with the Mongolian Defense Force and the Trans-System Federation. Uh, dishonorably discharged from the TSF 15 years ago for going off mission. Details classified. Uh, I don't think we really find out much about that, but she's basically... Fairly bloodthirsty. Although, you know, she's a mercenary, so there's a certain amount of honor as well. Emissary Kassar reports Mido was hired to accompany Paul Torgal on board the Degasi into uncharted space and defend the ship in case of assault by pirates or rival corporations. So it's, it's you know, pirates, but also kind of like Shadowrun in the effect that, you know, the future is basically a bunch of corporations going after each other. Okay, and so these are the six ones that we, the six logs that we found on that floating island. So we're going to start with Bart Torgal's log number three. One and two you don't have yet. These are the only six that you can find there. 
This is the first time I've seen sunlight in months. After all that time in the deep, I'd been dreaming of it. Now that I'm back here, I'm finding it hard to enjoy alone. My father was right. We should never have left this place. We shouldn't have gone so deep. They do not want us down there. Despite my best efforts, ill health is taking hold of me. The visions are getting worse. Marguerite and father are now part of the ecosystem of this incredible planet. It's reassuring to know that when I go, I'll join them. Until then, well, there's always the view. Right. Let's uh, fuel up for a second. Right, so basically just from that one that we know that uh, Bart went deep, all of them went deep, and, well, inventory full already? I guess so. Well, crap. Right, so they went, they went pretty deep. And, well, it didn't work out for them. But he also mentioned being ill, so that's not good. It's not good. We got six minutes, so let's head to the landing site. Because, you know, we don't want to miss it. And so it's basically like here, right next to this rock, and with a good view of the sun and the sky and that alien structure that we don't know what it is. Habitation location. This island is a godsend. Look out of the window. No predators. Fresh food. No building materials, nothing left of the ship. And your kid says we're gonna starve without more grow beds. Speak up, kid. It's true, father. The natural growth rates are too slow to keep supporting us. All I'm saying is oceans got us surrounded. No use hiding. Sooner or later, we'll get our feet wet. The rest of your life may have been a fight maida, but I've made my decision. You wanna forfeit your emergency pay to take a swim? Go ahead. Believe me, I'm thinking on it. I'm not sure Paul handled it correctly because Marguerite... Well, I mean, he's in charge, but Marguerite wants to fight. So him being confrontational is uh, maybe... Like, gets her, gets her fur up, so to speak. And apparently the grow beds also uh, speed up the growth of your crops, which is why you can plant a couple and live off of those. Son, I said wait for the storm to pass. Your life's more valuable to me than a plant patch. You stop being in charge when the ship you were captaining sunk. I'll stop being in charge when you take charge of yourself. Say, Chief. Chief. What? You know how to drain those grow beds of 40 tons of storm water? Or how to conjure food from the air? I know how to prioritize. I'm just saying, if that's so, what's your boy's life worth to you today? If tomorrow you're going to be so hungry you start wondering what he tastes like, let him go deal with the plants. Son, go deal with the plants. Bart. So this explains the landslide. So after that... See, Chief, you brought us to this sodden planet. Told us we'd see a lush payday. Now what do we got some six weeks later? A dead crew, a habitat that's half buried, food washed away. I suppose the executive decisions would be better left to someone with your extensive experience of hitting people in the face. I know enough not to take unscheduled detours to uncharted planets. That's something you don't want to learn the hard way. Easy to judge a decision in hindsight. Harder to come up with a plan of your own. Got one already. We take what we can carry and hunker down in a cave somewhere. I scouted a site. A couple hundred meters deep. Lots of metal deposits. How do you imagine we'd live? 
with ready access to building materials, like damn queens, a couple of water filters, a bioreactor, fresh fish. But Chief, we'll eat seaweed salad and drink our own urine if that's what it takes. All that matters is, do you got something better? Send the coordinates to my PDA. I'll review your proposal. So this is the one that we picked up that gives us the, uh, the Degasi habitation site. Not that one. Proposed Degasi habitat, 250 meters down. We don't have much time left. What is that thing? I don't know. I found it outside in the sand. Uh, part of another ship? None I've ever seen. It's not even scratched. I, I, don't fool around with it. It might be worth something. Stand down, Chief. If it were going to crumble to dust, it would have done so when I picked it up. It's glowing. We're not the first people to come to this planet. People? Maybe. Could be aliens. Could be the damn sea monsters for all we know. One thing for sure, we ain't going to find out by staying here. Kind of reminds me of a... Uh... Like a meme where you see a, a Reaper Leviathan typing on the computer and it's like, go deep, there's nothing to fear down there. Also, should start to be seeing something here soon. So we'll just kind of wait. Enjoy the sand, the surf. Trees you can eat. Soon. Well, we're at the spot. We're at the spot, so Sunbeam, come get us. Any time now. And then you're like, what's going on? What is that? And then you're like, oh, that looks, that doesn't look like a building anymore. Survivor, we see you. Man, I don't know how you held out down there. We broke an atmosphere, and we're descending towards the landing site. Where is the sunbeam? Is there it is. Down there? What do you mean you can't identify it? Turn back. Hold on. No turning back now. Positions, everyone. Wow, he's going Touching coming down, down fast. Ten, nine, eight. It's coming from the building? Change course. Set thrusters to full. Yeah. Yeah, no, no fragments of the Dega or not the Degasi of the Sunbeam to find. You see all these flaming bits of debris; they're just va they're vaporized, basically. So now you know why the Aurora crashed. Welcome to Dubai, gentlemen. And it goes back to being all innocent. Well, now that we have some time, and so this is basically, you know, this is kind of the point where it's like the story 
all hinges on you kind of from this point forward. So it's like, okay, well, rescue is gone. There is no rescue anymore. Chief's log, five weeks since the crash. The only other survivors are my son, Bart, and Mida, the cut price mercenary I commissioned for the journey. After days drifting in the life pod, rain hammering on the roof, the weather cleared and we washed up here. I had Mida salvage the Degazi wreck, set Bart to finding us a stable source of food. His education is paying off sooner than I'd anticipated. Our only problem is Mida. She says the weather's going to turn. I say she's finding excuses to risk our lives. I imagine she's not gonna weaken her life without a physical altercation, and she's itching for a fight. In every judgment she makes, things go from bad to worse. If she had my experience, she'd have more faith. Humans have spent millennia specializing in how to shackle nature to our will. <laughs> this planet won't cause us any new problems. That's not true. Our one task now is to keep us alive as comfortably as possible until the insurance company arranges rescue. In this part of space, that could be months or even years. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, the fact that there's no phase gate or uh, or Mass Effect Relay or whatever you want to call it. Basically, it, it, I want to say it took him three years to get out here. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be a while. We got kind of lucky with the Sunbeam. I mean, you know, so to speak, because they're dead now. But, uh... But, yeah, you know, it's like... The, the Sunbeam was just in the system. And they were on the far side of the system. It's like, there's there's nothing out here. So, it's... Yeah, it's gonna be... A while. And... This peeper is showing signs of the infection. Where is it? See? Specimen with systems of infection. And it pops up on the scanner as well. So let's, uh... View that real fast. Advanced theories. Our first advanced theory. Oh, the scanner. That's interesting. I kind of, I think I kind of like that better, where it fills up the window instead of just the circling bar. But what are you gonna do? Okay, this organism is displaying signs of a bacterial infection. Bright green, bright green blisters are forming networks around the infection sites. Pathology suggests a waterborne bacterium capable of penetrating the body through the skin and respiratory system. Underlying indications of genetic mutation and aggressive behavior, the bacterium itself is unlike any so far recorded in human exploration. Warning, may be contagious, avoid. Do not under any circumstances consume the flesh. Yeah, so as soon as we crashed, we were hosed. Um, so let's top off our food and water real fast, and we've healed a little bit, so that's good. And then we'll read a couple more things, and then we'll stop. Okay, so now we know it can take uh, four from the bubble tree. I don't know how many it can take. I, I don't think it's much more. Probably one, and the whole thing will just die. All right, let's head over there. Because next time we're going to explore that structure. And I love just the... Uh, like, those aren't actual fish, but it's just random, random sprites of fish. And I saw the shadow of a, what are they called, sky rays? The birds? Which, we'll scan one of those if we can get a little bit closer to one. They typically don't stick around. Well, okay, so first off, we'll go through the coral. Brain coral, threat level low. A permanent growing colony of microscopic organisms. This coral species has adapted to filter carbon dioxide from the environment, using the carbon to build the colony and expelling the oxygen from specialized exhaust funnels. It is quite hardy, suggesting samples from a mature specimen could be grown artificially. Assessment. Air tanks are equipped to siphon oxygen from the water where possible. This is pretty handy. 
if you have to, you can build a exterior grow bed, like just about anywhere, and put some of these guys in it and just, you know, live off the oxygen if needed. Coral shell plate. This variant of coral has adapted to survive in close proximity to other corals, filtering nutrients from the water and sharing them via a spore-like substance which grows around the base. Assessment. No practical applications discovered. Uh, this was the one that we scanned. I wish it would be nice if it showed a picture, but around the uh, acid mushrooms. It's like, a, it's like a plate with a bunch of... It's almost like a dishwasher rack where you have a bunch of plates stacked in it. So it's kind of like a bunch of slashes of coral. Giant coral tubes. These are the ones we get the salt and uh, the coral from to make bleach out of. The variety of coral formations on 4546 Bravo appear to be different solutions to the same problem of maximizing water and nutrient flow throughout the colony. These particular variants funnel water down a tube, filtering nutrients as they pass. Their size suggests they have been highly successful. Assessment. Coral tube samples are rich in calcium, exploitable in bleach fabrication. Indeed. Table coral. These are the ones that we hack off that we're going to use to make computer chips. Each disk is an individual colony of microorganisms filtering nutrients from the water. Growth patterns indicate the colonies are in direct competition for positions with superior current or light. Unlike other coral species, its structure is malleable, softly pulsating as it pumps nutrients to its extremities and only turning rigid when it senses physical assault. The jewel-like nose on the surface are concentrated buildups of rare minerals the coral is unable to process, kind of like pearls. Assessment exploitable in computer chip fabrication. That's well, handy. And I love how it just tells you. It's like, yep, you can use it to make computer chips. All right, well, all these blueprints, thermoblade, ultra glide fins, Cyclops engine blueprint. So you need three pieces of the Cyclops to make the full Cyclops blueprint. And you need three pieces to make each blueprint. So you need, you know, nine total. We got this fire suppression system. Now we have the multi-purpose room, so we can actually start building a base, or a you know a good-looking base, observatory, spotlight, exterior grow bed, bulkhead, power cell, modification station, little pot, pots for plants, a wall planter, wall-mounted foliage, purely decorational, but it looks cool. All right. So that is it for now. That is it for now, guys. So, seriously, guys, thank you for your time. Thanks for your attention. I really hope you enjoy these videos. Um, if you have any comments, feedback, questions, whatever, let me know. I'm always eager to look and hear and read people's responses and such. Um, and I do try to reply to everybody. You know, I may not reply to every single comment that a person writes, but I try to at least, you know, reply to at least one of them. Um, but that's that's it for, for today, guys. As always, uh, thank you and take care. Hope to see you guys next time.